welcome back guys around this side and i hope you are enjoying this course now the next topic that we have is linux distributions guys understand linux as we already know that it's an open source operating system the kernel is freely available so there are a lot of people who try to modify the linux kernel and distribute linux operating system in their own names and that's why I think there are around more than 600 or 700 Linux distributions out there. But we'll not be understanding about all the 600 Linux distributions. What we'll be looking at is what are the most famous Linux distributions in the market and when you should use those distributions. Guys, let us compare Linux with Windows. See, in Windows operating system, it's one single package like you just purchase windows from microsoft you do not purchase control panel differently or you do not have to purchase um, notepad differently you do not have to purchase the gui interface separately you do not have to purchase the run or the cmd command and so on when you buy windows operating system you get all in one components it is one software with all in one components packaged together all right so you only pay for one single operating system and you get one operating system where definitely Windows might give you different choices for you to choose between the versions. But whenever you purchase an operating system, it is just one single package or one single piece of software, right? When it comes to Linux operating system, it is a little bit different. See, in Linux, we have different parts and the problem with Linux is all these different parts are developed by the different companies. For example, we have Linux shell utilities, we have Linux kernel, the graphical programs, the system tools, and all other components, right? So all these different components are developed by different companies and it is not easy to assemble and sell those components as one package. As a user, like you can also access all these freely available Linux components and assemble them yourself. But of course, it will not be so easy, right? So this is where Linux distributions come into picture. So what exactly are Linux distributions? They are assembled packages or they assemble the Linux distributors. They assemble and give you one package operating system to install and use so let me make a couple of notes for you comes as a single package a linux is different and you need to assemble different linux components to or for it to work perfect now what are linux distributions they assemble and give you one package operating system to install and use all right that's linux distributions now, as I mentioned earlier, guys, there are more than uh, 700 Linux distributions, but some of the common distributions you might remember will be looking at all these distributions one by one. I think there are how many seven or eight distributions that we'll be looking at because these are the distributions you must be aware of. All right. So the first one is Ubuntu. Now, this is one of the most famous Linux operating system and I think you might have definitely heard about Ubuntu operating system It works exactly like Mac operating system and it's very easy to use right, so That's Ubuntu the next one that we have is the Linux Mint This is another Linux distribution it works like Windows and can be used by beginners like if you are a beginner and if you want to learn Linux of course you can start with linux mint it's very easy to work on linux mint the next one is debian d-e-b-i-a-n 
that's another flavor of Linux or Linux distribution uh, that's available in the market and guys when I say Linux distributions it is also known as Linux distro okay so some people call it as Linux distro uh, that's a short form for distributions so don't get confused about it it's one and the same so things about Debian it provides stability but not recommended for beginners even though it's a stable Linux operating system but it is not recommended for beginners the next one that we have is Fedora the thing about Fedora OS is if you want to use the Red Hat operating system and latest softwares then go for Fedora Fedora is like one level above Red Hat operating system I think we are talk about the Red Hat operating system so if you want to use a higher version of Red Hat operating system with latest softwares always go with Fedora the next one we'll be looking at is Red Hat guys Red Hat is the most popular enterprise Linux operating system that is available in the market it is to be used commercially and there is a license involved to use the Red Hat operating system so it's a commercial Linux operating system which is used by large enterprises to run their servers the next one is CentOS let's take if you want to use Red Hat without any commercial license then go for CentOS it's free and the next one that we have is open Suzy and that's how we call it <clears throat> it works exactly like Fedora but slightly older and Fedora is more stable when you compare to open Suzy right the next Linux operating system or the distribution that you should know is Arc Linux and for the Arc Linux one problem guys is it is not for beginners because in Arc Linux what happens is you are supposed to install all the packages by yourself even though you are a user but you will have to install all the packages separately one by one so for beginners it is not at all recommended to work on Arc Linux and finally we will understand about Oracle Linux because that's what we are going to learn in our course the Oracle Linux is the operating system which is exact copy of the Red Hat OS or Red Hat Linux and it is compatible with Oracle database also it's free to use guys out of all these operating systems as I mentioned Red Hat is the only one I think we can name it as the Red Hat Enterprise okay the Red Hat Enterprise Linux is the one for which you need the license but for all other Linux flavors you don't need a license so does the Oracle Linux the Oracle Linux is free to use it is exact copy of Red Hat and one of the biggest benefits that we have when you use Oracle Linux is by default it is compatible with your Oracle softwares because we already know that it is developed by Oracle and it is also customized for all the Oracle software installations that you want to perform on the Oracle Linux software so the next question is does that mean if you learn one Linux operating system it will be easy for you to work on all the other Linux operating systems of course yes the thing is guys as I mentioned and as we already know that the Linux operating system uses the same kernel if you have good hands-on experience on any one of the Linux operating systems you would be easily able to work on any other Linux operating system now the next question is does that mean if you are comfortable in working on Linux operating system can you work on Unix operating system the answer is yes see Linux is byproduct of Unix but the kernel is a little bit different right so the Unix commands all the Unix commands and all the Linux commands are 90% same but there are some commands which are different when it comes to Unix and Linux now those commands when you start working on the operating system you can definitely figure out by googling up or asking your seniors in the project wherever you're working 
but it's very easy to figure out so ultimately if you learn either unix or if you learn any linux you can ultimately work on the other flavors of linux and you can also work on unix as well so it does not mean that you start learning all these linux operating system just master one linux operating system and you should be able to work on any other operating system in our upcoming lessons we'll be very soon trying to install the oracle linux and start working on the operating system that's all for now guys and i'll see you quickly in the next lesson